Welcome to Die Trying. Why buy when you can make? I'm Patrick Norton. And I'm Michael Hand. You got a haircut. I did. I mean, you got it's a serious haircut. Yes, the DIY Floby isn't quite ready for production yet, but I'm working on it. I've never seen a farmer stand on a forehead before. Now you have. <laughs> Your bangs are short. This week we're helping out a dear friend, our coworker, Nick Robinson, works on Rev3 Games. He's got a problem. He's had it for quite a while. He works in gaming, he does tons of gaming content, yeah. has like 200 games on Steam, but no gaming rig. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna help Nick with his gaming build, and actually he figured out a really cool way to get help picking the optimum collection of parts for his budget. Let's hear what Nick says. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, meet Nick from Hello. the audience development department here at Discovery Digital Networks. Yep. You actually got, I actually kind of like what you did when you went to build this machine. You came up with a list and then you took the list to a whole group of people to make it better. Right, so I kind of assume that the internet knows more about computers than I do, probably. a feeling. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Uh, so uh, me and Michael built like sort of a perspective list of what we'd want the machine to sort of look like and brought it to the Build a PC subreddit. Mm -hmm. They're kind of notorious for taking things and beating them into shape and kind of helping right. us evolve the machine. No, uh, you don't need that. Yes, you do need exactly. that. Exactly. Spend more here, spend less there. What was the biggest surprise the Build a PC subreddit had for you? Um, they, well, one, one dude in particular helped me realize that if I cheaped out on the motherboard, mm -hmm. I could get one of like the fourth or fifth best video card in existence, right. the 770, um, which is, was an awesome revelation. Uh, and I think it's gonna make the machine a lot more interesting as a well, result. So the GTX 770, it'll allow you to actually uh, do streaming from Steam and streaming to Twitch right. and YouTube. It's confusing that they're both called streaming, but basically that thing has uh, Shadow Play, which right. is NVIDIA's tech for streaming directly to websites like Twitch and YouTube. And then uh, um, I'm also lucky enough to be in the Steam in-home streaming beta, which we just did at Texillabytes about, um, which is amazing because it lets you like play a game like Crisis mm -hmm. on a MacBook Air with minimal latency. It's pretty incredible. And we should probably point out you have the coolest brother on the planet. Yeah, so my brother found out I have a library of like 200 Steam games and a MacBook Air that is only capable of running about half of them, right. if that. So uh, for Christmas he gave me like a, a sizable budget to kind of build a gaming PC out of. And basically the goals with it were like make a PC that can stream games mm -hmm. to the internet easily and can like run games now. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not really concerned because like build a PC, that subreddit told me, don't be concerned about future proofing because right. it's a fool's errand and like. Today's $1,000 GPU is tomorrow's $200 yeah, GPU. Yeah, exactly. Right? It's just not uh, worth pursuing. So just make something that can play games today, mm -hmm. now have them look great, and stream them to the internet is kind of what I want to do here. What did you use when you were shopping at some interesting websites to pull together kind of the best deals? We use PC Part Picker a lot. They have like Reddit markup built into right. the site, so you can easily take a build list, take it to Reddit, get advice, go back and forth over and over, and lets you compare prices really mm -hmm. easily. So I wound up buying most of the machine on Newegg, and then getting the graphics card from Staples of all places. It was really a really happy. good deal though. Yeah, it was an incredible deal. Um, so. We built this PC like just barely over budget. I think it was $830 before rebates. Mm -hmm. So assuming I have the self-control to make myself mail those in, it'll be right under the $800 mark, which That's is what we were aiming for. Freaking awesome. Yeah. So you ready to build a PC? Yeah, absolutely. Off to the workshop. All right, so we have all the parts that we need for a PC. <laughs> this is what happens when a PC disassembles itself in the middle of the night. Yeah, it's very like modern deconstructed PC. We actually, We'll build a PC on the like wall art in another episode. Okay. But CPU, motherboard, memory, hard drive, Wi-Fi, power supply, case, and the all important graphics card. Which is actually my GPU, not Nick's GPU, because Staples still still hasn't shipped to us. Three to five business days, my ass, Staples, but we'll talk about that later. But it's it's a little bit lower power than what Nick's GPU is gonna be, but it's basically the same thing. Nick bought his GPU six weeks later and got more power for the same amount of money. <laughs> this is the fundamental rule of GPUs and processors and why you should never try to future proof. So if you've never built a, a computer at all, it's actually not that bad. It seems kind of scary, but there's just a few parts that fit perfectly together and then you have a PC. <laughs> That's how I put it. That's actually a pretty good way of putting it. Look, the, we kind of want to separate things in stages. And the first stage is getting the CPU onto the motherboard, mm -hmm. getting the cooler onto the CPU, and getting the memory into the motherboard. And then you can take that whole assembly and drop it inside of the case. Nick actually is using the stock cooler. Yeah, because we're not going to be overclocking or right. anything like that. So the stock cooler should be good enough. It's not going to be as quiet as like an aftermarket cooler, but... The goal of this machine was to get all of the gaming power for the least amount of money possible. So yeah. Intel thoughtfully has pre-applied heat sink goop on there. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're gonna pop that in place. Do you wanna release the uh, cool? So when you're 
when you first get the motherboard, there'll be a, a little plastic piece in here. So the way these work, if I can do it correctly, is there's a little hinge that you have to push down. Okay. It's right there. And then it'll pop up. You take out this little plastic piece. Now, two or three safety tips here. Do not let a cat or anything else like shiny objects, like a small child get this. The nice thing now though is like, so there's no pins anymore. There's pads on the base of the chip, so you don't have to worry about pins being bent, but you do have some seriously tiny surface mount parts right down here, so don't drop this, okay? It'll just ruin your whole day. Now, this should be slotted and only fit one way, and if we're really lucky, I'll find the actual little triangle on there. There's the excellent would fit. And the fun part is the amount of force you need to hold this thing down, uh, which is a little frightening because you're like, ah! And then you hook it under this tab here. And basically, the number one possibility for screwing up your computer is now eliminated. <laughs> <laughs> so Intel's got it pre-assembled with a thermal compound in place. Mm -hmm. If you're putting thermal compound on, if you're basically bringing your own aftermarket cooler and thermal compound, um, don't obsess over thermal compound. There's charts on the internet that use mustard and it's not that much different than an actual thermal, thermal compound, so don't obsess over it too much. Yeah, it, it costs significantly less too. I love Arctic Silver, use it all the time, and they have great instructions to tell you exactly how to apply it. And that's as far as I'm gonna get into it, except to say, make sure you wipe any fingerprints or grease or nose prints or anything off the CPU before you put any thermal compound on there to make sure your greasy, nasty, <laughs> skin cell filled, who knows what, doesn't compromise thermal compound, although it looks like somebody already pressed their thumbprint into this. I touched it, sorry. You touched it? I, would, I wanted to... So when the system blows up, it's your fault? Yeah. <laughs> Make sure your power cable is gonna reach the power on the board for the CPU fan, that's CPU fan two, CPU fan one, so I'm gonna rotate it this way. And this is not nearly as scary as it looks. I'm gonna align the tabs into the slots, and look kids, it's like Legos. <laughs> I don't know if it's as much fun. No, it's not nearly as much fun as Legos, but after it's assembled, you can start Minecraft. <laughs> so you wanna check that to make sure it's all locked down? Sure. Next step in building up the motherboard is going to be inserting the memory. Generally speaking, your motherboard wants the first two sticks of memory placed in a certain location. So your manual will say, in this case, the motherboard wants it in alternating slots to mm -hmm. do, so it can do a thing called dual Dual channel memory? Dual channel memory. And by the way, don't forget to plug in your CPU cooler yeah. and make sure you get the wires outside the fan so you don't use the fan to cut the power wires <laughs> on there. Another nice thing about modern CPUs is that if they're having a thermal emergency, they will very gracefully shut themselves down. They will not disintegrate. So this one and this one? Yep. Just as long as they're alternating. Align the slot and the tab. Just press it into place. In some cases, there's only a one, one more, one three. Yep, got it. And our motherboard is assembled and ready to drop into the case. So once the main guts are in place, you want to grab the miscellaneous screws that came with your case. The first thing you need are the motherboard standoffs. They look like a screw designed to have a screw screwed into it. They hold the motherboard up off the metal siding of the case. So now come the chassis wires, power reset, the activity lights, all that. These aren't the most fun to attach, but they're usually labeled pretty well, at least in super tiny type. Feel free to use a magnifying glass and a pair of tweezers. Your motherboard should come with a manual. Look for in-depth diagrams that make it much easier to figure out which chassis wire goes where on those tiny pins. Next, you want to screw in your motherboard. Make sure that there's a standoff for each hole and that there aren't any extras. And don't over-tighten. Bad things can happen. Now it's time to screw in your power supply, add in any hard drives, and slot in the graphics to your fastest PCI Express slot. So the next step is really crucial, and Patrick and I are really bad at it. It's cable management. Your power supply is a medusa of cables. You're going to want to route cables in a way that they're out of the way so you get optimal airflow and not one big giant ball of, well, cable in the middle of the case. So this can be kind of tricky because every motherboard, every case is different, but generally zip ties are your friends. Make sure that the big motherboard supply cable, CPU fans, PCI Express, hard drive, and other peripherals have the required power cables and that they're plugged in. And don't try cramming a square plug into a triangle hole. 
Unless, of course, you have a powerful need to like destroy your graphics card or your motherboard, in which case, go ahead. By the way, check to make sure there's actually clearance between the sides of the case and the back of the motherboard or anywhere you try to route cables. Nothing more annoying than getting the entire thing wired up and finding out you can't actually put the side of the case on or the back of the case on or some other part. Not that that happened to us. No, not, not at all. Is there enough clearance, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> uh, just, just, just force it a little. Are you ready? I'm ready. Fire it up. Drum roll. I hate this part. <laughs> I see, see things on the screen. This is good. Cool. We just need an OS. We do need an OS. Hey, if you're thinking to yourself, this system build fails, I have to get a new career, you might want to check out. <laughs> Our friends over at lynda.com, they're a sponsor of the show, lynda.com slash DIY. It's an incredible resource. AutoCAD tutorials, Photoshop lessons, just an incredible learning resource. And if you go to lynda.com slash DIY, you'll get a seven day free trial. I guarantee you're gonna learn something new and exciting and you'll be supporting Die Trying. So Michael and I don't have to get a new job. We should probably talk about where people can contact us. Yes, you can go to at DIY Trying on Twitter mm -hmm. or you can send emails to DIY Trying at revision3.com. That's a good place. Um, comment down below on any of the videos on Revision 3 or on YouTube. Especially if you're interested in finding out how we turn this request for an operating system into a Hackintosh <laughs> for Nick. That could actually be our next week's show. Does he need a Hackintosh? He's yeah. trying to get away from that. Oh, that's true. Well, maybe we'll build our own Hackintosh. All right, let's do that. In the meantime, youtube.com slash DIY try and please subscribe, comment down below. Please share. If you think someone that you know will like an episode, send it to them. Yeah, you can actually find links for the RSS feed if you want to download on iTunes or any of the number of platforms. Go to DIYTryin.com and get things signed up. We also have little share links in there too to make it really easy to tell your <laughs> friends about the show. Please tell your friends about the show. Uh, any urine next week? I really hope not. <laughs> <laughs> send your projects, your builds, your ideas, your thoughts, your comments. If you're not commenting down below on YouTube at DieTryin or DieTryin at Remission3.com. I'm Patrick Norton. I'm Michael Hand. See you next week. So beautiful.